Oh, you believe, give charity for the pleasure of Allah, the pleasure of Allah. Oh, you believe, read the Quran every night of Ramadan, night of Ramadan. Welcome, oh Ramadan. Ramadan, it is Ramadan. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam and humanity, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. May the peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. Welcome to the series, Ramadan, A Date with Dr. Zakia. I'm your host, Yusuf Chambers, and today we will be discussing the objectives of fasting. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Zakia. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The objectives of fasting is the topic today, and I'd like to begin by asking you exactly what are the main objectives of fasting? Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah wa ala ali wa sahbihi ajma'in amma abad. Awuzu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim. Bismillahi rahman rahim Rabbi shali sadri wa yisirli amri wa halu al-ugdata min lisani yafqaw kawli. There are many objectives of fasting. I'll just list the main ones. Number one is seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two is to obtain taqwa, to acquire taqwa, that is God consciousness, piety, righteousness. And you can say when you acquire taqwa, but natural, when you learn taqwa, automatically even the pleasure of Allah Subhanahu comes in it. So the first one can be included in the second one. The third is for entering Jannah. We fast for entering Jannah. Number four is for the expiation of our sins. Number five, is to seek the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number six is for the forgiveness of our sins. If we fast, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives our sins. Number seven, to acquire a shifa. That is the right to intercede, the right for intercession. If we fast, the fast will intercede on the day of judgment for us. Number eight, it is to realize the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number nine, to increase our willpower and our determination. Number 10, it is to acquire good deeds. Number 11, is to gain more honesty. Number 12, it is to decrease our desire, diminish one's desire. Number 13, to narrow the passage of the Satan. Fasting narrows the passage of the Satan. Number 14, to act as a shield. Fasting is a shield for the believer. Number 15, to abstain from false speech. And number 16, to abstain from false actions. These are the major objectives of fasting. Oh, Jazakallah khair, Dr. Zakir. Regarding that introduction, and we should be covering all of those uh, <laughs> subtitles today, inshallah. Inshallah. I hope. Time permitting, of course. Inshallah. Does a person who fasts um, achieve all of these objectives when he or she is fasting? If a person truly fasts in the right way, with all its requirements, inshallah, he has to achieve all these objectives. But when we see around us, all of the people fasting don't achieve these objectives. Why? Whenever a person does an act, it has got two components. One is the method, and second is the objective. For example, we human beings, we eat. Why do we eat? The first thing is the act of eating, and second thing is why do we eat? What is the objective of eating? 
as far as act of eating is concerned, it contains four parts. One is making the morsel. Number two is putting in the mouth. Number three is masticating it, that's chewing it. Number four is putting it down the throat. But the goal, the objective is to make our health. The objective is to live. People eat for the health reason, mainly, and to live. But along with the main action, there are ancillary things, there are associated things attached, which if it's not done, then the objective will not be achieved. For example, suppose someone takes sand or sawdust and makes a morsel out of it, puts it in the mouth, masticates it, and puts it down the throat. Do you think he'll achieve the objective? Will he achieve the health? Will he live? So there are associated things required with that. Similarly, with fasting, besides abstaining from food, drink, and sex from dawn to sunset, there are other things required along with it, which we discussed earlier, things encouraged, things which are recommended, etc. Abstain from things which are discouraged to achieve the main objective. There may be some people who may do the right things or there are things, for example, the food that you eat, it should be healthy. If you make a morsel out of a food which is junk food, which is not hygienic, and then if you have, you won't achieve the objective, you won't achieve good health. Or maybe a person has healthy food, he makes a morsel out of it, puts it in his mouth, masticates it, chews it, puts it on the throat. But after some time, he puts his finger in his throat and vomits out. So will he achieve the objectives of eating that is health? Not at all. Similarly, to achieve the objective, we have to have the ancillary things. Besides abstaining from food, drink and sex, abstain from false actions, false speech. And if you vomit out, the whole purpose is defeated. Let me give another simple example. There's a person who comes from the village to my city of Bombay. And he says that, I want to go to America. So someone tells him, OK, purchase a ticket from Bombay to America and reach America. The main act to go to America, you have to purchase a ticket and go by plane. Very easy. The person from the village purchases the ticket and he goes at the airport. Then they ask him, where is your passport? He says, what's the passport? People told me, I require a ticket and I purchase the ticket. They said, no, you require a passport. He goes back and then he prepares the passport. It takes him a few days, a few weeks. Then he comes back again. Then they ask him, that, do you have immigration clearance? What is immigration clearance? Some countries require immigration clearance. So he goes and gets back his immigration cleared. Then now he said, okay, now I have to go to America. So he has the ticket now. He has the passport. He has the immigration clearance. And he goes to the counter and he gives it. So they show him the boarding guard. When he goes to the immigration, they ask him, where is your visa? Do I require a visa also? He again he's stuck. So he goes back and he applies for a visa. And you know to get the visa of US America is one of the most difficult. So he applies and he finally gets it. So how to go to America is you have to go by plane and you require a ticket. The main act is you have to fly in the plane and you have to purchase a ticket. But associated ancillary things are that you require a passport, there should be immigration clearance, you require a visa. A person cannot leave the country without having a passport. A person cannot enter any country without having a visa of that country. So all these are associated things which are understood to a person who has knowledge. But the basic thing is purchasing the ticket from Bombay to USA. But even after he purchases and has all these things done, for a person, if you compare this to fasting, person abstains from eating, drinking, and sex from dawn to sunset. But the associated things are, he should abstain from false speech to acquire the benefit. He should abstain from false action, from all the things which are haram. These are ancillary things. And then he will achieve the objective. Now, that person wants to go to America. But what is his objective? Some people may want to go to America to study. It's a country where you can get education. Some people want to go for sightseeing. Many people, they want to go there for prostitution. Many people want to go there to have drugs. 
Some people do have alcohol. Some people go there for homosexuality because America is a country where homosexuality is legal. So what is the purpose that you want to go there? Some people want to go to America to gamble. So one thing is to go to America, what is your objective? So if some people fast, not having the objective, some people may fast to diet. Some people may fast to lose weight. So then they will not achieve all these objectives of taqwa, paradise, forgiveness of sins. They are fasting, they are abstaining from food and drink, but the objective is losing weight. So if a person wants to go to America for prostitution, for adultery, for gambling, for drinking alcohol, for drugs, his main other objective won't be achieved. So what is the objective is important. Some people may want to go for education. So we have to realize that all those people who truly know the ancillary associated things along with fasting, and if they know the objectives which are listed in the first answer, inshallah, they have to achieve all of them. If they don't, then as the blurred Prophet Muhammad said, that it's mentioned in Hadith of Ibn Majah, Hadith number 1690. There are many people who fast, but they do not get any reward except for hunger. And there are many people who stand up in prayers. Their standing is of no benefit, no reward, except for sleeplessness. Hope this answers the question. Jazakallah khair, Dr. Zakir. The next then logical question is, what exactly are those ancillary associated acts which you've spoken about, which inshallah you're going to furnish us with all the information, uh, aside from doing away with food, drink and sexual relations with one's wife during the daylight hours of Ramadan, which will enable you to achieve the real objectives of fasting? In short, if you want the answer in one sentence, it is obeying the commandments of Allah and His Messenger. If you obey the commandment of Allah and His Rasul, all his commandments, then inshallah, you will be following all the necessary things. In detail, there are hundreds. We listed the major ones just a couple of days back when we discussed the topic recommended and discouraged acts while fasting. And if you remember, we had discussed 32 points in the topic of recommended acts while fasting and about 29 points in acts which are discouraged while fasting. Both put together 61. And in all these days, we have discussed more than 60 points which are recommended and discouraged. In short, if you follow the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger, we are doing the associated things. In short, to mention, just to highlight a few more, a few which we have discussed earlier, the beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of fasting, hadith number 1901, a prophet said, that anyone who fasts the complete month for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for him and seeking reward from him, he will have all his sins forgiven. So first thing is the intention, it should be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should do it to seek the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Furthermore, it's mentioned in Sayyid Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of fasting, hadith number 1894, a prophet said, fasting is a shield. And the message is repeated in the same Sahih Bukhari, volume 3, Book of Fasting, Hadith number 1904, where our Prophet said, Fasting is a shield. It will protect you from the hellfire and prevent you from sins. And our Prophet said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 3, in the Book of Fasting, Hadith number 1903, he said, that anyone who does not leave his false actions and false speech, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not require him to leave his food and drink. Here, in this hadith, the major activities which are associated are mentioned in this hadith. It comes in two categories, false speech and false action. False speech, as we discussed earlier, includes backbiting, slandering, lying, verbal abuse, vulgar speech, gossiping, rumor mongering. In false action, we have things which people do very often in Ramadan is listen to un-Islamic songs, listen to music, watch un-Islamic television programs, un-Islamic movies, read un-Islamic magazines, they go to un-Islamic websites, wastage, extravagance, 
all these come in this activity. And as I mentioned earlier in the early answer, our beloved Prophet said in Sunan Ibn Majah, Hadith number 1690, that there are many people who fast, but they don't get any reward except hunger. And many people who stand in Salah, their standing is useless, they get no reward except for sleeplessness. And our beloved Prophet also said in Sunan Ibn Majah, Hadith number 4250, that anyone who asks for forgiveness for the sins he has done, it is as though he has not committed that sin. So in this month of Ramadan, you can ask for forgiveness, and inshallah, Allah will forgive your sins. And it's mentioned in Musnad Ahmad, Hadith number 6626, that two things will act as intercession for you, fasting and the Quran. The fasting will say that this person left his desire of eating, drinking, and sex for me, so I will intercede for him. And the Quran will say that this person, he kept on reading the Quran, and I prevented him from sleeping. So I intercede on his behalf. So Quran and fasting will intercede for you on the Day of Judgment, and we shall take you to Jannah. MashaAllah. May Allah make it easy for us to really get the maximum benefits of uh, this Ramadan and the fasting, inshallah. Next question regarding the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said through one of the hadiths that fasting is for me and I shall reward you for it. What are the implications of this statement from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There are various say hadith in which our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that about the statement which Allah makes. It's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of fasting, hadith number 1894, as well as hadith number 1904, where Allah says that all the deeds of the son of Adam are for himself. Except for fasting, it is for me. And it means that all the other acts of worship, whether it be salah, whether it be zakat, whether it be hajj, all these can be done only for show. The person can do for ya, just for showing off that he's praying, he can give charity for things that he's giving zakat, he can hajj. But as far as fasting is concerned, a person can easily go inside the kitchen, inside his room, and without anyone seeing, he can easily eat. So if you truly fast, it is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It cannot be for show, it cannot be for ya. So that's the reason Allah says that all the other acts of son of Adam are for himself, but fasting is for me. And that's the reason when the hadith, which is mentioned in Sunan Nisai, in the book of fasting, hadith number 2223, where a companion of the Prophet, Abu Umama, may Allah be pleased with him, he comes to the Prophet and he asks him that tell me which deed that I can do which will be accepted by Allah, which is very dear to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Prophet said that you fast. You stick to fasting. Amongst all the deeds, he says stick to fasting. And that's the reason in another hadith of Sahih Muslim, volume number two, in the book of fasting, hadith number 2567, the beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah says, all the deeds of the son of Adam are for himself, and every deed that he does, he gets a reward 10 times or up to 700 times. But fasting is for me, and I will give him the reward because he leaves his food, drink, and desires for me. So that he says he will give the reward. That means in fasting, it will be much more, inshallah, even more than 700 times. So therefore, because it's only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says that. I will give the reward. And he hasn't disclosed, but it means that, inshallah, much more than 700 times. Beautiful. Let's hope that we get as much as 700 times this Ramadan and all the Much viewers. more than that, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. Um, the next the statement you made earlier on from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam regarding fasting being like a shield, a protection. Could you enlighten us with a little bit more information about why it's a shield? Why is fasting a shield? The Prophet said in 
Sahih Bukhari, volume number 3 in the book of fasting, hadith number 1894, that fasting is a shield. The similar message is repeated in Sahih Bukhari, volume 3, book of fasting, hadith number 1904, the Prophet said, fasting is a shield, it will protect you from the hellfire and prevent you from doing sins. The reason our beloved Prophet Muhammad said this is because that when a person eats and when his stomach is full, that is the time he can think of doing other deeds, many of which may be haram, which may be wrong. But once a person is hungry, he doesn't think of these haram things. Only when the tummy is full can you think of doing something. Else. Imagine if you're hungry, if you're really very hungry, you will not think of going to a movie. When you're really hungry, you won't think of uh, listening to music. So that's the reason when a person is hungry, it prevents him from doing the sins. That is the reason Prophet said that it is like a shield. And furthermore, beloved Prophet Muhammad said, especially in Sahih Bukhari, volume number four, in the book of Jihad, Hadith number 2840, the beloved Prophet said that anyone who fasts for one day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep the hellfire away from that person for a distance equivalent to 70 years. In another hadith, a beloved Prophet said, it's mentioned in Hadith of Tirmidhi, Book of Jihad, Hadith number 1624, the beloved Prophet said that anyone who fasts for one day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make a trench between him and the hellfire whose distance will be equivalent to the distance between the heavens and the earth. So that's why when a person fasts, it even constricts the pathway of the devil, of the Satan. And that's the reason it prevents him from doing the bad deeds, the false actions, the false speech. And that's why the Prophet said it's a shield. And to give one more example, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, verse number three, in the book of fasting, hadith number 1905, the Prophet said that all those who have the means to get married, they should get married because it will help them to lower the gaze and guard the modesty. But those who cannot marry, they should fast. It will keep them chaste. That means fasting also prevents you from doing the sinful act of looking at an harem. It helps you lowering the gaze and it prevents you from your mind diverting towards the illegal acts like adultery, fornication. Because imagine if you are really hungry, then no one will think of doing these evil acts. That is the reason the Prophet said fasting in the shield. Thank you very much for the answer there, Dr. Zakia, regarding that. Very, very useful information, and I'm sure that uh, brothers and sisters will take note of that. Dr. Zakia, one of the said main objectives, actually, of fasting is the next question. Taqwa, what I understand as the fear of Allah or the being aware of Allah, could you explain this concept, the, the concept of taqwa, so the viewers will be able to take maximum benefit from uh, that information that they could fast better? As far as taqwa is concerned, just to give an example, taqwa is like if you are walking in a very narrow lane, which has got a lot of thorns. There are plants and creepers and trees with a lot of thorns. And you walk in that narrow lane, trying to prevent your clothes from getting stuck in the thorn and getting torn. So how well you do that, that is an action of taqwa. Linguistically, taqwa comes from the Arabic root word waqa, which means forbearance, which means fear, which means abstinence. Islamically, it means fear of Allah. Islamically, taqwa is the state of the heart of a human being and the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The consciousness of his presence and of his knowledge, which makes him do the righteous deeds. And it prevents him from doing things which are haram and makes him pious. That is the reason taqwa, if you translate one word, people translate as God consciousness or Allah's consciousness. It's translated as piety. It's translated as righteousness in short. And Taqwa, actually, as the blood Prophet said, it is a shield. 
and taqwa is the shield which prevents you from the hellfire and it prevents you from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are various verses of the Quran which speak about taqwa. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 102, Ya ayyuhal lazina amun, O you who believe, have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and die not except in the state of Islam. That means the believers should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and die not except in the state of Islam. And Ibn Masood bin Allah be pleased with him while giving commentary of this verse. He says, it means that the believers have to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and should not disobey him. They have to remember him, they should not forget him. They should be thankful to him and they should not be ungrateful. And the criteria for judgment in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for judging any human being it is taqwa. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Hujurat, chapter number 49, verse number 13, Ya ayyuhan nasu, inna khalaqnaakum, min zakrin wa unsa wa jannaakum, shu'um ba'um wa qaba'a ila li ta'rafu, inna karamuk min dhalla hayat kaakum, inna Allah alimun kabir. Which means, O humankind, we have created you from a single pair of male and female, and have divided you into nations and tribes so that you shall recognize each other, not that you shall despise each other. And the most honored in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the person who has taqwa. The criteria for judgment in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not sex, it's not color, it's not caste, it's not money, it's not wealth, it's not age, but it is taqwa. It is God consciousness, it is piety, it is righteousness. Only way one human being can be superior to the other, it is by taqwa. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad he used to always encourage the Sahaba and he always gave guidance to his companions that they should increase in taqwa. And especially when they went on a military expedition, he always said that fear Allah, have taqwa. And that was followed later on by the Sahabas in giving advice and the Khulfa Rashidin. And we also have a hadith of Hadith Umar, may Allah be pleased with him. He told his son Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with him, that have taqwa and fear Allah. And he said, you fear Allah and he will protect you. Have taqwa of Allah and he will protect you. And he further said that if you give in the way of Allah, Allah will reward you. And if you thank Allah, he will increase. Here we realize that there are many verses in the Quran which Allah gives us guidance about taqwa. For example, Allah says that taqwa is the criteria for a person to acquire righteousness and Allah to accept your deeds. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Ahzab, chapter number 33, verse number 70 and 71, Ya ayyuhal lazina amunu, O you believe, have taqwa of Allah, fear Allah, and those who obey Allah and His Messenger, they are the people who will achieve a great reward, would have reached a higher achievement. And Allah gives a similar message in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 27, where Allah says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the acts of those who are muttaqoon, those who fear Allah. That means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the deeds of the people who have taqwa. Point number two, those people who have taqwa, they gain the pleasure and love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah says in Surah Hujra, chapter 49, verse number 13, that the most honorable in the sight of Allah is the person who has taqwa. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 76, whoever fulfills his pledge and has taqwa in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, indeed, Allah loves those who are muttaqoon. Allah loves those who have taqwa. The third point as far as taqwa is concerned, Allah says in the Quran, that because of taqwa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives your sins and He increases your reward. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Talaq, chapter number 65, verse number 5, that anyone who fulfills his duty and has taqwa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives his sins. He remits his sins and increases his reward. 
The fourth point mentioned in the Quran regarding taqwa is those who have taqwa, Allah keeps them on the straight path and prevents them from deviation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Anfal, chapter number 8, verse number 29, Ya ayyuhal lazina amun, O you believe, have taqwa, and Allah will give you the furqan. Furqan means the criteria to judge right from wrong. And there are various commentaries given. Some people said that Furqan here means the straight path. Some people of the commentators said that Furqan means paradise. So if you have taqwa, then you will go to paradise. Further, it's mentioned in the Quran. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Hadith, chapter number 57, verse number 28, that those who have taqwa and those who believe in the messenger, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them a light by which they are guided. So taqwa keeps you on the straight path and prevents you from deviation. How to achieve this taqwa? Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 21. Ya ayyuhan nas, O humankind, worship thy Lord who has created you and created those people who came before you so that you may learn taqwa. So if you worship your Lord, who has created you and people who came before you, you will learn taqwa. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 183, Ya ayyuhal lazina amunu, O you believe, kutiba alaykum as sayamu, fasting has been prescribed to you. Kama kutiba ala lazina min kablikum, as it was prescribed to people who came before you. Lallakum tattakun, so that you may learn self-restraint. The word here, tattakun, so that you may learn taqwa. So here there are two examples given. How can you learn taqwa? One example is we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know salah is the best pillar. That a Muslim is supposed to offer salah. He has to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala five times a day. And this keeps him on the straight path. And this increases taqwa. And the second thing, one is the daily activity. And Ramadan fasting is the annual activity. Like how a body requires overhauling once every year. Every machine requires servicing. Some require once a month, some require quarterly, some require yearly. And if you allow me to call the human being a machine, it is the most complicated machine on the earth. Don't you think it requires servicing? So Ramadan is the overhauling, is the servicing of the human body, body as well as soul, once a year, during the month of Ramadan. And this increases the taqwa. It increases the God consciousness, righteousness, piety, as we discussed in all these days. And I'd like to give an example. There was a Sahaba, when Ramadan was coming, Makkah used to be very hot. So he is traveling towards Taif, just a couple of days before Ramadan. And there's a Bedouin who's traveling the opposite direction from Taif to Makkah. So this Sahaba asked him that, aren't you afraid of the heat in Makkah during Ramadan? So he says, I am running away from the hellfire. So that was his taqwa. So that gives an example of taqwa. Who is most righteous? Allah says in Surah Hajj, chapter number 22, verse number 32, whoever honors the symbols of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the person who has taqwa. Allah further says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 204, that you may be dazzled with some people's speech and they may swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the heart is clean. But Allah knows that these people, they are vicious enemies of humankind. Allah says in the Quran, Talking about awliya as the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in Surah Yunus, chapter number 10, verse number 62 and 63, that those people who have taqwa are the people who are awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Awliya means a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means those people who have taqwa, who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these are the people who are awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah further says in Surah Anfal, chapter number 8, verse number 34, Allah says, but most of them realize not. So these are the few verses and many other verses which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about taqwa in the Quran. May Allah enable us to be with full taqwa this Ramadan, Ameen. inshallah. Ameen. All of us, inshallah. Ameen. To Zakia. How can fasting enable us to enter paradise, the Jannah? As far as fasting being a way to paradise, as we mentioned earlier, Allah says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 183, 
lallakum tatakun so that you may learn self restraint that means make it taqwa and taqwa will be a way to paradise therefore allah says in the next verse surah baqarah chapter 2 verse 184 fasting is better for you if you only knew it that means it's better to fast and allah says in surah azab chapter number 33 verse number 35 innal muslimina wal muslimati for muslim men and women wal mu'minina wal mu'minati for believing men and women wal qanitina wal qanitati for devout men and women was sadiqina was sadiqati for true men and women was sabirina was sabirati for men and women who are patient wal khashiina wal khashiyati for men and women who humble themselves wal mutasaddiqina wal mutasaddiqati for men and women who give in charity was saimina was saimati for men and women who fast wal hafizina furujum wal hafizati for men and women who guard their chastity was zakrin allah zakirati for men and women who engage much in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's praises a'adallahu no maghfirat wa jannatima for them allah has prepared forgiveness and ample of reward this reward is jannah so all these people allah is talking about those who submit their will to allah those who believe those who are devout those who are true those who offer salah those who pay zakat those who fast in the month of ramadan those who of the chastity those who praise allah all these people allah has promised them paradise so this verse also talks about paradise and it's mentioned in sahih hadith of musnad ahmad volume number 1 hadith number 1661 our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that a woman who prays a five times salah and fast and observe the chastity and obeys the husband she will enter paradise and the hadith of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam hadith of tirmidhi in the book of supplications hadith number 3545 once muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he climbs on a member and he says amin 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 thrice so the sahaba they ask him that why have you said amin so he says that archangel gabriel he had come to him and he was saying that a person who does not have his sins forgiven in the month of ramadan then it is very sad for him and he shall not enter paradise say amin archangel gabriel to moses say amin so moses also repeats amin thrice further the hadith which is mentioned in sahih ibn ihban in the book of fasting hadith number 3438 where a person approaches the prophet and tells him that i worship none but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i believe that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the messenger of allah i pray five times a day i give zakat and i fast in the month of ramadan and i stand in prayer who will i be amongst what will be my reward the prophet said that you will be amongst the followers of the prophet and the martyrs that means you go to jannah further there is a hadith which is mentioned in book of tirmidhi hadith number 2616 a person comes and asks the prophet that what act should i do by which i can go to jannah so the prophet says that this is a very difficult thing to do but for whom allah wants it to make easy it's very easy he should believe and worship only one god and should not associate any partner with almighty god and believe in the messenger he should pray five times a day he should give zakat he should fast and he should perform hajj and this person inshallah will go to jannah there is another hadith which is mentioned in musnad ahmad also repeated in sunan nisai as well as sahi jami hadith number 4044 where abu umama may allah be pleased with him he comes to the prophet and asks that what act should i do that will take me to paradise so the prophet said you fast there's nothing like it so one act that will take a person to jannah the prophet said fast there's nothing like it and further it's mentioned in sahih bukhari volume number 3 in the book of fasting hadith number 1899 the prophet said that during the month of ramadan the gates of heaven they open and the gates of hell are closed and the devils are chained and the prophet also said in sahih bukhari volume number 3 in the book of fasting hadith number 
where it says that in the heaven there is a gate by the name of Rayan. And only those people will pass through this gate who have fasted. And those who have not fasted, they will not pass through this gate. And Allah will say on that day that all those who have fasted, they stand up and the people who have fasted will stand up and they will enter through this gate. And after that, the gate will close. And all those who have not fasted will not be allowed to enter through this gate. So if you fast, you go to paradise and you will enter through the gate of Rayan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to enter the gate of Riyan and to go to the Jannatul Fiddors, insha'Allah. Dr. Zakia, we've reached the stage where we've uh, finished our individual interview and now I'd like to pose some questions from the audience regarding the topic. Is that okay? Sure, from the audience, from our Peace TV viewers, we have received so many hundreds and hundreds of emails on the topic, objectives of fasting. First question, why do some Muslims abstain from sins only during the month of Ramadan, um, you know, whilst they're fasting? And after the month of Ramadan, in the other 11 months, we see them lying, cheating, stealing, and men doing many of the other terrible sins, unfortunately. May Allah protect us from those sins. I mean, why is it so? Why do those people, what possesses these people to do those acts during the 11 months and not this one month? The reason is the same as I mentioned earlier, that we should know the objective of fasting. If you know the objective of fasting, inshallah, even after Ramadan is over, the person will yet be on the straight path. As I mentioned in my example, that you should know the method of the act and the objective. So people may know the method, how to eat food. They make a morsel of the food put it in the mouth, masticate it, chew it, and put it down the throat. So the act, the method they know very well. That's what they do in the month of Ramadan. But after that, if someone puts a finger in his throat and vomits out, so that food will not make him healthy. So that's what is happening. The main purpose, the objective, they don't know. Objective is to increase the taqwa, to make a person come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if that is there in the mind, so even after the month of fasting, if it's gone, yet the person will be on the straight path because they don't remember the objective. Come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once your sins are forgiven, if you repent truly, one of the criteria for repentance is that besides saying that what you have done is wrong, asking for forgiveness, stopping it, also saying that you will not do it again. So if they ask for forgiveness in the right way, they will not go back to the old bad habits. So if they follow all these rules again, inshallah, even after Ramadan goes away, they will be on the straight path for the full year like how we have to pray five times to be on the straight path. Ramadan once a month is overhauling of the full body, the mind and the soul also. So once a year is sufficient if you know how to do it correctly. Very good answer. And let's hope we can get much closer to Allah in this month, inshallah. Question two, there are Muslims who continue to lie in their profession. Maybe I think they're probably referring to a lawyer or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Not lawyer, liar, lawyer. Um, even in the month of Ramadan whilst fasting, what's the advice you'd give to that type of person? Does this affect their fasting? As far as a person lying, does it affect or not? Our beloved Prophet has said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number three in the book of fasting, hadith number 1903 that a person who does not leave his false action and false speech, Allah does not require him to leave his food and drink. That means if you lie, the whole basic purpose of fast is defeated. But will the fast be accepted? Yes, it will be accepted. It may not benefit him. The fast will be accepted. His reward may be diminished or he will yet get the sin of lying. Let me give an example. For example, someone wants to do wudu. He can't find water and he robs the water. And he does wudu. Will his wudu be accepted? Yes. Wudu will be accepted, but the act of robbing is wrong. Act of robbing is wrong, but the wudu is accepted. Similarly, in fasting, telling a lie is haram while fasting, but the fast will be accepted if you theoretically. But practically, the reward he may not get. Similarly, a person doesn't have money to go for hajj. And he robs the money, or he does a business which is illegal, he may be dealing in riba, 
and he does Hajj. And if he follows all the arkans of Hajj, his Hajj will be accepted, but his act of acquiring the money was wrong, whether it was robbing or whether it was dealing with riba. So similarly here, theoretically, his fast will be accepted. He has completed his fast what he has to do. But his reward will be diminished and his points will be deducted and he will get the negative points for lying. Action intentions need to be in line with Quran and Sunnah. Dr. Zakir, we've run out of time, I'm afraid. We've got so many questions that we need to answer. Uh, but we will answer those. We'll endeavor to answer those later on in the series, inshallah. inshallah. Jazakallah khair once again for your excellent answers yeah. to the many, many questions that brothers and sisters have had. And of course, so our fruitful interview earlier on regarding the topic objectives of fasting. Thank you very much. Jazakallah khair. Brothers and sisters, we've reached the end of the show. We haven't reached the end of the series. Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zakia. We will be back with you tomorrow at the same time when we will be discussing the topic benefits of fasting. So please do join us then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> مسلمين مؤمنين للإله عابدين شهونا صوم وعتق وقنوة فيه صدق يومنا صبر ورق بدموع البائسين رمضان قد أهل بالصيام وأطل مسعدا أهلا وخلا لكه